Hello, Garrett, and welcome to the Nordic Data Science and Machine Learning Summit. It's a pleasure having you and IBM with us. Uh, before we dive into further questions, can you please tell us more about your background and the company that you're representing today? Okay, so uh, my name is Gareth Mitchell-Jones. Uh, I work for IBM's analytics division, uh, which is kind of part of our cloud business. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, well, personally, I've worked in analytics for 24 plus years uh, in all sorts of different industries, uh, working with clients on problems including things like tax fraud at, uh, mm. at uh, government offices, through to telecoms providers, uh, working on analytical operating models, developing um, unique systems using machine learning and, uh, and, and lots of different data types and sources. So mm -hmm. pretty much everything you can think of, if it's got data in it, I've touched it at some point. Uh, nice. <laughs> Interesting. So um, your session today was about fueling data-driven transformation with scale and speed. Um, can you tell us more about that, like a short recap? Yeah, of course. Um, so uh, the session is effectively around how uh, IBM has had to change uh, mm -hmm. in order to keep up with the uh, requirements of a very changing marketplace. So we've spent uh, probably in the region of about $20 billion uh, acquiring companies in the analytics space. So we have something for everything uh, and usually four of each, uh, which is very confusing for customers, um, but also um, they're very proprietary products. So they're licensed, installed on desktop, those sorts of things. Um, and what we've found through speaking to the marketplace and working with our mm -hmm. analytical customers is that actually they don't want that anymore. What they want is open source technology and they don't want to pay maintenance and license fees. Um, they would prefer to have uh, the use of open source and machine learning capabilities from the open source community. So mm -hmm. as a result, IBM has um, had to change uh, mm -hmm. internally. So we have opened up uh, connections with the Open Data Initiative. Uh, we've invested heavily into the open source community and we continue to contribute to a number of areas of machine learning and, uh, and data science across across the open uh, open source movement. Great. So um, today um, we are um, uh, discussing about data science, in particular machine learning uh, and artificial intelligence. Um, and so, and of course, how can companies maximize the ROI from them? Uh, what is your opinion on these subjects and how does IBM help in this area? So uh, we believe at IBM that we've built mm. the first platform that is actually enterprise ready. So actually a lot of the, the capabilities that our, we see our competitors having, um, they can respond in certain markets very well. Mm -hmm. So let's say the US market where there are less restrictions around the use of data, but when you get to Europe it becomes a bit more of a challenging problem. Um, so we have to have data residency, yes. we've got GDPR coming up, right. so things like compliance, regulation, um, the ability to track and, uh, and mm -hmm. look at who's using or accessing which data, you know, we've, we've built that into our platform, um, as well as artificial intelligence through our Watson capabilities, so that's available in the same platform, we have data science and machine learning available in the same platform. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we have all of the data sources and repositories, both proprietary from, from IBM, but also lots of open source opportunities as well for people to, to kind of get to grips with their own particular favorite or flavor um, of data science or artificial intelligence machine learning capability. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, considering uh, the huge amount of data, the technology which is developing faster and faster every day, um, how, how mature do you think and we are, how ready we are to actually innovate through data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. And if companies are still not ready, um, how can they get there mm -hmm. with these trends along? Yeah. So I think um, keeping up is really hard because, mm. um, uh, you know, certainly even as an individual who's been working in this area for 24 years, I don't know everything. And there are people who know a lot more than me around particular areas. Um, I think you know what we've realized is that this whole area is a team sport so it's not about mm. a single individual having all of the capability it's great if you can find the magical unicorn as we called them yesterday um you know yes. but um if, if you can't find that magical unicorn and that person doesn't isn't readily available to work in your company actually you've got to create a team of people um, that can help you get to where you need to be um using the relevant skills of each individual to create an overall capability uh, so actually be mm -hmm. very clear on what your objective is and then design your team to build that objective and then effectively you'll build something useful. You can then start to effectively, well, as long as you've worked in an environment where 
you're able to not just pilot things and test mm. things and innovate, but actually then think about how you can deploy that into production mm. uh, through the same environment without having to change all the infrastructure and all of the work that you've done. So too often we walk into customers who have made heavy investments in technologies or solutions that actually um, they've been able to pilot and de develop and innovate, but then they're not allowed to put it into production because it's not uh, compliant or doesn't meet uh, regulatory or legislative requirements. So I think thinking about those things up front mm. and making sure you design and work on platforms that have that capability built in, you know, security especially, um, you know, lots of data breaches uh, already being reported at the moment where, mm. you know, as we think through the, the three or four from the last few weeks that have been in the news, you know, really big data breaches. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we don't want that happening with our stuff and therefore we've built that in from the beginning to make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm sure. So the technology is very agile today and it moves with incredible pace and in innovation. From your point of view, how can organizations utilize the full potential of data um, and technology innovation? So I think one of the key things is uh, understanding what data you've got in the first place. So uh, again, if you look at most organizations, um, you know, especially organizations that have been working in data analytics for a long time, um, then they have a lot of data across their enterprise already. Um, so how do they use that data? Um, they might mm. be using some of it, but actually there's still a lot of data that's dark, that's hidden away on servers or in applications or operational data stores that are, that's not being touched or used because actually it's just not available. Um, mm. So there's a requirement to make those areas of organizations work together better. Um, there's, an area, there's a requirement to catalog all of that information uh, together so that actually you, know, you understand what you've got as a, as a set of assets across an enterprise, be that internal mm -hmm. or external. Um, and you need to be able to then... Um, push that out to everybody in the organization with policies and governance around it that mean that actually you can't break legislation or regulatory requirements um, through the access or reuse of data for uses of which it wasn't intended. Um, okay. So having the ability to deploy that within your technology environment, your data environment, and then analyze and use that for data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence use cases. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's kind of you need to take the problem away from the the end users so that they don't have to worry about that, but actually that they have all of the assets that are potentially available available to them when they need it. Great. Uh, one final question, Garrett. Uh, three hypes: uh, data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Where does this go in the nearest future? Um, I think it goes to you know I think we've been pretty open. We think it's um, we think it's augmented human intelligence. Um, mm. So it's not replacing humans. It's supporting them, mm. and making us to you know, allow us to make better decisions more regularly, more frequently. Um, from a customer perspective, it's allowing us to um, to interact with businesses and get the best experience possible every single time. So if we think through some of the stuff we've done around Watson. Um, then you know it, it's actually it's about the customer always speaking to the best the best agent with the best knowledge mm. every single time you speak to somebody at the end of the phone whether or not they've been in the company a week mm. or whether or not they've been there for 30 years and they know everything about every product and service that that company has and how do you present that same face to every customer that picks up a phone or you know that actually gets onto a chat right. Garrett thank you very much thank you. it was a pleasure having you with us and thank you for the input on the summit thank you very much <laughs>